Field Rescue, a 430 horsepower truck. <laughs> and it does really good burnouts. So today we're actually at a friend's house to do a field rescue on this 1978 Chevy pickup. The engine is actually really nice. It's got a 383 crate engine that makes about 450 horsepower. But recently he hasn't been able to get it running. And what we're thinking is that he ran it out of gas and the fuel pump that's on it is having a hard time priming and pulling through the little dinky filter that's on the suction side. So we're going to try to get that working first so that we can take this thing, move it out of here, then move another car out of his garage after moving two other cars from in front of the garage, put this in the garage, then take the other car from the garage and put it in here. Yeah. Did I get all that right? Uh, I think so. Okay. I think so. And then once we get this thing in the garage, we're actually going to install a fuel injection system on it to make it a little bit more drivable. Okay. That thing is all ready for you to start taking it apart. <laughs> all right. This thing's low rider. You want to unplug the battery? That's what I'm doing. So the problem here is going to be, if we chuck that filter, we're going to need a nipple. Well, I was thinking maybe we could even clean the filter out or just poke some holes in it. Oh, just drill a hole straight through it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would work. It's, it's all getting replaced anyways. Yeah. It didn't want to flow at first, but then it started to. I might have blew it out, yeah. The problem with this style of pump is though, is that they really need to be as low as possible in comparison with the tank. They gotta be really low and kinda help siphon it out of the tank into the pump. Otherwise I think they will have problems priming. I'm just gonna put this back in then and I guess we can try it. I've seen a little bit get in there. Turn it off. Now try it again. It should have filled that up by now. I could try starting it and seeing what happens. Yeah, give it a crank. Oh, no. I don't think that's going to be enough. I was trying to think of another way we could prime it. I think it's just having a hell of a time trying to prime. No, we could pressurize the it. tank. You, you suck on the hose. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Shane, we got a job for you. <laughs> What's that? Oh, oh what about blowing on the tank? That's what I was saying. We could blow on the tank and pressurize the tank and yeah. maybe get it to, to come out and start. We could try that. I guess turn the ignition on and we can see. And give the tank some pressure. I mean, in the past, I've found it doesn't take a whole lot. Oh, here it there goes. There it goes. There it goes. Just had to give the pump its prime and there it goes. No, if it sits long enough, it just lost its prime and the pump got dry. The pump's mounted above the tank, so that's going to kind of cause problems. I don't know if there's enough juice to... Give it a couple pumps. Let's try jumping that battery yeah. with... Uh... Did you have cables? Yeah, I've got cables in my car. It's, it sounds like it's not too far off. It no, just needs it's a not. little help. She's trying to come alive. Man, I'm surprised at how much trouble it's having starting. What's up with this coffee I was hearing about? Yeah, I know, seriously. Do so you think we just do this for free or something? <laughs> yeah. See how much shit we can get going on here. <laughs> Clamp that to that. It's ready. Yeah, wide open. Just, yeah, I it think seemed to like being now. wide open. I think is we're what flooded it's like. now. Why does it say, oh, it says three, two, one, go? <laughs> I don't know how that works. I almost wonder if these plugs are fouled. It was, it's probably worthwhile to slap a new set of plugs in it. 
So I remember earlier when I said we were going to get this thing running and then get it into the garage and then install a fuel injection system on it. What I meant was we're going to spend all day <laughs> trying to get it running and then probably not have enough time to put the fuel injection system on it. That's what it's looking like. But hey, one problem solved. We're getting fuel now. Yeah, at least we're getting fuel. Well, I'm kind of wondering why this thing is smoking plugs all the time. They're champions, that's why. You know what, I'll tell you, champions work good in some things. They work good in Harleys, that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> Guess that's what I was getting at. It's, it's the only freaking engine they work good is a Harley Davidson. They don't work, they always foul on everything else. Mm -hmm. Oh, we got some poopy looking clouds moving in. Okay, so our buddy ran and picked up a battery and a set of spark plugs for this thing. And then in the middle of that, we just got hit by a serious typhoon here. So, so we're gonna work on swapping out spark plugs and then we're gonna swap the battery out and hopefully this thing will fire right up. Now when you're changing out spark plugs on an old motor, you wanna do them one at a time so that you don't get your spark plug wires all mixed up. I'm doing them two at a time. <laughs> or if you're Brandon, you can do them two at a time. If you're working on an LS motor, it doesn't really matter because the coil packs are directly above the plug, so it's pretty obvious which one goes where. Are we ready? We are. That seems a little better. I think it runs way too good cold. I think yeah, it's too rich. I think the thing is jetted way too rich. Yeah, yeah, it's way too rich. I may be stating the obvious here, but this is a bucket seat. Perfect. See how quick this is. <laughs> yeah, the truck with the mini starter. <laughs> this thing, it spins this thing over like it's got a mini starter. Didn't give the oil much time to get going. <laughs> Gotta get it up on that camshaft. Sure. I think yeah. purrs like a kitten though, doesn't it? It does purr like a kitten. All it takes is to rev it up to five grand with no oil pressure. <laughs> yeah. The next question is, will this fit in there? <laughs> there we there you go. go. Yeah, I slid out that plywood, but that should do it, yeah. All right, back to the task at hand. Oh, it comes with a little screen. Yep, that's for dialing the thing in, getting it programmed. That's cool. So... It doesn't really matter what the fuel pressure of this thing takes because we can't use that pump no matter what. That thing's no not going to be enough pressure. Yeah. So we know we got to use this one. And I forgot my duct tape. You got any duct tape? That's how we're going to install the fuel pump. <laughs> <laughs> So getting this thing running took way longer than it should have, but we finally did it and got it into the garage. So now what we're going to do is drop the tank so that we can make a return line system to go into the top of the tank. You can tee into the vent tube? Um, 
You know, as long as uh, it won't squirt out through the filler, then that's probably fine. I feel like if we want to do it right, we should probably drop the tank and get a look at it. I like all the rubber inside the fender. <laughs> good look, isn't it? Yeah. Good look, isn't it? That is the correct look. Well, let's see. I guess while you're doing that, I'll start popping this carburetor off. I suppose it might be a good idea to disconnect the battery again. Oh, yeah. Probably should do that. Oh, this fuel line still got a bunch of pressure on it. I just moved it and it squirted me. Whoops. <laughs> All right, there we go. Yeah. So sweet. All right, buddy. <laughs> okay, this gas tank's ready to come out. You want to help me kind of finagle it out? So we're going to use the old EVAP purge line for the return line because we're not using an EVAP purge canister or anything anymore. So the kit gives you a bunch of 3-8 soft hose, which I don't really like running for the whole pressure side of the system, especially going up through the frame reel next to the exhaust and where it can get cut on the frame and stuff like that. So I'm just going to use some 3-8 brake line and bend it up into all the right shapes and stuff to go down the frame rail pretty much directly from the throttle body and then I've got some fittings so I can convert this flare end to an AN line and then go from the throttle body to this. And then we'll still have some short soft lines that go from the filters to the pump and from this to the filter but those ones will only be like three inches long each down away from the exhaust and all that stuff so i just think it's a lot better to do it this way than to run soft line all the way up from the pump oh man i almost freaking nailed that line just perfectly where it needs to go with all the other lines. <laughs> Sweet. Okay, so we've been plugging away at it here. Uh, we got all the plumbing done. Brandon put the fuel pump in last night and we had to make a little bracket and stuff to mount it. And we're just using the old hard line to run the return line back to the tank. And then I put a new 3 8 hard line in for the new pressure side, coming up to some nice braided hose that uses AN fittings that I adapted from the hard line with an adapter. And then we're running to the throttle body from that. So now we basically just got to finish the wiring on it and then we have to put some parameters into the controller and then check for leaks, test fire it, and then probably find out we don't have enough ground wires on everything, and then we'll probably have to go back to the drawing board. Are we ready? I think we might be. Couldn't find group. Check your TF card. What does that mean? Well, this guy says it ended up being a bad handheld controller. Maybe I'll pull the SD card and put it back in. Let's see, Let's see if this bitch will find the group now. There it goes. Just had to remove the SD card and plug it back in, I guess. Okay, engine setup. Connected to the ECU. Default engine is 355, so we're going to set that to 383. Okay, and then send to ECU. Sent, succeeded. Okay, I think we're gonna try it here. Check for more lakes real quick. Come on, baby.
starting to burn my eyes. So if we want to do more tuning on it, we should bring it outside probably. I wasn't totally satisfied with the way the engine ran and it had a really hard time starting warm as well so I decided to come back and try to get some more parameters dialed in manually. This is what began one of the most frustrating tuning processes of my life. Keep in mind that I've installed fuel injection systems before, both self-tuning systems and systems that require tuning with a laptop. Okay, now we're gonna fire it up and hopefully it'll stay running on its own. Is this thing's just like the Nova? No uh, rollers? Yeah, no, no window roller. So to get this thing to self-tune, we're gonna have to drive it around a little bit at varying loads and RPMs. So we'll find some good back roads to go do that on. There's definitely a few areas there where it needs to it feels a little weird yeah where it feels a little weird it's kind of surging a little bit it's going to have to tune itself in but let me stop in and grab another fire extinguisher just to have a full one because <laughs> you never know yeah all righty <sighs> of course. That's weird. Too lean? Give it some fuel, computer. Huh. could maybe bump up after start enrichment but we'll see if it does it again you know maybe a combination not enough of that uh, and or not enough uh, cranking pulse width yeah sometimes it does it's just not doesn't seem to be running all that great even though the AFR seems to be in the right spot yeah. hopefully it's not fouling the plug and trying to not running very good though down to like 10 to 1. Yeah, it's acting like it's got a dead dead cylinder, like it's got bad plugs or something. No, that wasn't no, too bad. back around a little bit. stop at this uh, auto parts store and just grab another set of plugs just in case they foul when we're out in the middle of nowhere it's just kind of it's kind of all over the place it'll have a second where it's running real sweet and then it'll kind of start running shitty well they didn't have them so they didn't have them no. nothing that compared to it no he gave me the numbers for the auto lights and the other NGKs, but he didn't have those either. Uh oh. So. All right, well, we'll just keep going. It's just frustrating that it would start, that it, you know, it ran pretty good when we first started it up, and then and now it's just like, what's it doing, you know? So you started with, well, uh, gonna do it. You kind of got 
to give it some gas to keep it running otherwise. Sometimes changing a setting manually would make the thing run better, but then it would progressively get worse instead of progressively better. It started better that yeah, time. Yeah, it started better and it drove out of there again. Yeah. You know, it's like. If I could actually play with the actual fuel numbers, what it's actually injecting, then that would really help, but you can only set the target. getting it back to the house it wouldn't restart. What we found was that at idle and light loads only the two passenger side injectors were firing. Then at full throttle all of them would fire. So obviously that must have been responsible for the erratic behavior of the engine. This thing was having so many problems running that I eventually decided to bring it to my house so I could really focus on it. After getting on the phone with tech support, they recommended a full factory reboot, which didn't fix it. So then they sent new injectors, which also didn't fix it. So then after hooking up a fuel pressure gauge, I found what was probably the biggest problem. Remember back when we installed the return line on the EVAT purge port on the tank? As it turns out, this port has a check valve in it, so the fuel would nearly deadhead against that valve at full pump speed and caused the pressure to spike over 100 psi. After removing that check valve, it ran so good that I thought it was finally done, but I was wrong. Just when I was about to return the truck, the map sensor quit working. See these numbers here? They should change with load and throttle position. But then it started working after the engine cooled off. Tech support said that was probably from the map seal expanding from engine heat and plugging off the map sensor hole. So I trimmed it like they said to do. After a few test drives, now the thing actually runs well. And what better way to get a self-tuning system to tune wide open throttle than with a few burnouts? had a speech prepared for what I thought was happening. Like maybe the fuel pressure was so high that it was forcing the pintles closed on some of the injectors with weaker coils at times, but then the higher pressure would make the engine too rich at other times, and then the map sensor would make it too lean so the computer had no idea what to do or something to that effect. But the more I go back and think about what the thing was doing, I feel like I'm just as confused as that poor computer was. 
But I guess if I had to find a positive side to this whole thing, it would be that now we know that the entire fuel system, including the return line, is rated to over 100 PSI, which certainly helps me sleep at night. So I suppose the million dollar question here is, would I try one of these systems again? Well, considering the fact that part of the problem was installation error, I would say maybe. Honestly, my favorite systems still are standalone ECUs where you have to make your own wiring harness and then use whatever throttle body you want. I've dialed engines in to run perfectly with these even without an oxygen sensor at all. And if you want, you can hook an oxygen sensor up and set the fuel table to auto-tune for a few miles, then turn it off so your fuel table has no way of getting thrown out of whack. Those are honestly the systems I've had the best luck with. But since most of my knot rods don't need to run upside down, for now I'll probably be sticking with a carburetor and a manual choke. Yeah, cool. Cool. Starter's not wanting to crank. This thing is f***ing cursed. <laughs> Maybe uh, you want to go tap on the starter real quick. You know what it might be? What's that? The small wire for the starter might have popped off. Well, I think that is a perfect way to end this episode of Not Rod. <laughs> right here, broken down, right in the driveway. The cursed C10. <laughs> Well, today on Not Rod, we field rescue a 430 horsepower pickup. <laughs> sort of. I love these uh, new safety nozzles that they make these days that are literally way less safe than the old school ones that didn't have any of this crazy crap on them. I've never had one of these that didn't leak all over the freaking ground. Whatever. I don't make the laws. Oh, we got almost half the can in there. And the other half is on the ground. <laughs> the old school style nozzle on my jerry can never leaks at all. And you're telling me that that valve doesn't let fumes out? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, that thing is sealed up so well. Oh, uh, and they, they come brand new like that. Yeah, the brand new ones leak just like that, just the same. Freaking Congress. See, and then this is, this is what happens every time, is the spout just comes off because they suck so much. Should we, we coffee, coffee up, up real quick? Yeah, or? let's coffee up real quick. All right, uh, so where were we? All right, buddy.